The first meeting is really a get to know you meeting. We're gonna sit down, typically the meeting will last about an hour. We're having a conversation. My job is to ask them some questions about where they are, what some of their goals are, what some of the key objectives they have in, in meeting with me, where they are to this point, and really what brought them in to see me. And now I'm at the point in my career where I have a lot of people that are dependent upon me uh, to provide them with all the guidance and all the advice that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. You spend your working years trying to build up your assets, trying to, to build up pension credits at your job, trying to grow your nest egg so that you can one day retire when you can't work or don't want to work anymore. And that's the a period F, followed by phase two, which is retirement. And your priorities in these two phases are very different, but many times we see people don't make that shift and they still act like they're in phase one when they really should be acting like they're in phase two. We're going to talk to you about uh, what we commonly refer to as the second half of the game. And what I mean by that is you're working your entire life uh, towards retirement, and I'm assuming that most of you are you know, at that age where you're starting to consider some of your options as you move into retirement. And as you do that, you're moving from what we call the accumulation phase of your life, where you're accumulating your assets, maybe you're participating in your company's 401k, maybe you're contributing to an IRA account or a Roth IRA account or some type of retirement vehicle. And now, as you retire, you're transitioning into the distribution phase or the, the part where you're, you're going to need income in retirement. So we're going to talk about some different ways to do that with an emphasis on Social Security. Welcome to Financially Speaking with Jeff Bush. My name is Steve Jablonski and I'll be the host for today's show. Our topic today is risk and more specifically Riskalyze, a program that we use with our clients to really help identify the true risk tolerance of our clients. We really feel this is important, especially because the markets are at an all-time high, up around 250% from, from the lows back in March 2009. Okay, well, hello, Steve. Welcome to the show. Uh, first, let me say it's great to be here uh, today on PCTV. And, um, of course, Steve, having you as our, our host, uh, we'll great, we're grateful to um, have this presence not only in the Pottstown area, but uh, also via the Internet uh, on the PCTVnetwork.com and, of course, our website, which is uh, informedfamily.com. So uh, a great big thank you to our friends here at PCTV. So today, we're going to talk about Risk Allies, uh, the program that we use with our clients to measure risk, Steve, and allocate their portfolio uh, according to a scoring system. Yeah, Jeff, one thing we found uh, when we use Risk Allies that we feel investing is broken right now. Um, why, do, why do you think that's true? Um, well, it's well, for a couple of reasons, and as you stated, the markets are at an all-time high, um, and we have the, the chart here, and you can see that, um, you know, we, there's a lot of information on that chart, but most importantly, if you follow the lines, it was, it, it was like a roller coaster. Yep. It went way up, and then way down, and then way up, way down. You know, those are two big global recessions in there. And now, um, you know, the markets, as you stated, are at an all-time high. Um, we, we always refer to this as, you know, this is not your father's stock market. This is, this is really volatile. So we really need all the tools that we, uh, that we, we, we have to, uh, to manage this. And that's why we use this um, risk of lies. Um, investors naturally have a tendency to buy when things are good, sell when they get scared, miss the recovery, buy back into the markets when they f f feel safe again, and repeat that until it's broke. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, and really too, Jeff, the short term does matter because 
if people do not have their true risk tolerance, uh, it's only time in a down market before the investor will, will capitulate and make an emotional decision that they think it's good now, but they don't understand how much it really hurts them, in, as you yeah. said, in the long term. Yeah. And that was really prevalent. That's a good point, Steve. And that was really prevalent back in, uh, in 2009 when um, the markets were, I shouldn't say 2009, I should say, two, well, 2009, 2008 and 2009, um, when we just had a lot of uh, panic yep. and people were ignoring fundamentals completely and just re reacting and overreacting, of course. Um, so all of, all of our research, Steve, points to a simple truth. Uh, while investors should be focused on the long term, they react to risk yep. in the short term, and uh, and emotional reactions to risk are the number one killers of of long term financial goals and results. Yeah, and and we look at the environment today uh, versus 30 years ago. There's clients are just deluged with and, and people with with information out there. Some's true, some's not true. Some is specific to them, some isn't, some is not. Um, and what we don't want to do is we don't want to give our clients big, big reports. One thing that we really love about Risk Alive is that's really specific to them. Yeah. And uh, actually, we're going we're gonna, to uh, stay tuned because we're going to show you a, a way uh, to get a, a free copy of okay. your own personalized uh, Risk Alive report. Uh, which we think is 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 very powerful and very a very effective uh, planning tool, and of course we're in the uh, we're in the age of uh, information and misinformation and fake news. You know, that, no one ever talks about fake news in in uh, in financial terms or financial news, but there really is, and I don't want to necessarily call it fake news per se, but there's a lot of there's just a lot of noise a lot of you know information and usually it's coming from uh, people with a very uh, very specific agenda yeah you know and of course uh, you know you you watch TV there's financial stations on yeah. TV you know you read a lot you, you know there's just a lot of there's a lot of stuff out there so it, it, it becomes overwhelming and and um, and consuming, uh, uh, it comes over, becomes overwhelming yep. to the consumer. So I guess what we're trying to do today is we're trying to simplify something that's maybe not so simple. But the old way of assessing risk, uh, stereotyping investors were subject to semantics based on their age. Yep. Okay, uh, that simply doesn't work. Uh, even worse, many uh, advisors, when they use these stereotypes, they choose to... Uh, use investment for portfolios uh, for their clients. So just very specific portfolios. And this simply isn't right, Steve. In fact, um, a team of academics uh, assessed our methodology and data and found that 52% of 20 to 29 year olds, so young investors, millennials, if you will, they're not aggressive. So about half of these, uh, half of this group, they're not really aggressive yet you would would venture to say most financial advisors would put them in an invest an aggressive category. Uh, conversely, 53% uh, of 70 to 79 year olds wow. aren't conservative. Okay, so advisors really need to be empowered to treat their clients as individuals. Yeah, and and I believe that. Investing shouldn't be focused in on solely the return, okay? Uh, because people don't understand if you're saying it's going to get 8% and it gets 2% or negative, um, the investor says, well, you, you, you said we were going to get 8%, okay? So it should be more focused in on really the, 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 risk, the risk level right. first. Yeah, because the truth of the matter is, as we put it, as we showed you in the earlier slide is that markets are unpredictable. They've been unpredictable historically. They're yep. going to be uh, unpredictable 
going forward. In fact, that's the one, that's the one constant that we can say here, that the markets are going to be um, unpredictable. So simply stated, uh, the way we invest for our clients is putting risk first. And when you can do this, when you can quantify the risk alignment, that's when you can really empower uh, fearless investing because then it doesn't matter what happens. If you've, got the right, if you've got the right risk score and you've got the right alignment of those investments that go along with the risk score, that's when you have fearless investing. Right. And, and when we talk about risk allies, uh, people do get assigned a specific number, okay? And when we look at it, if we think about driving, driving the speed limit uh, or, or driving, uh, if you're driving 25 miles an hour versus 75 miles an hour, the 25 mile an hour, there's a lot less risk, a lot less chance of getting in an accident versus 75. So when we look at the scale, it starts at one, which would be if you were invested in cash, and 99 would be that if you were all invested in, let's say, Groupon stock. A high tech stock. A high tech, yeah. you know, fly by your risk, right. risk, risky stock. Um, so that's really where it starts with. And, and what we find is that when people come to us, most of the time, their true risk tolerance is a lot lower than what their portfolio is. And in an up market, people have no idea that that's really the case. And that's why this is, this is really so dangerous for them and we feel it's very important. Yeah, because in an up market, uh, you may not even notice, you know, because we're actually finding that now because yeah. with, you know, with some blips in the road, um, the market's been over, overall the market's been up. Yep. Um, but, you know, so, so people don't really even know what their, uh, what their risk is. Um, so we're going to offer a, uh, a free report today based on our risk uh, discussion. So anyone watching us can get a free risk alized report. Uh, you can send us an email uh, at info at informedfamily.com or give us a call. And we can actually give you your own score. Uh, which kinda, it's kind of like taking your temperature, Steve, yep. uh, to see where you're at regarding the risk um, inside your investments. And also we can determine... Uh, where you know where you should be given your uh, your personal yep. situation. And Jeff, Riskalyze is one tool, but can you tell us a little bit more about how that integrates and, and how you do planning? Well, yeah, it, it is it is one tool, and we and we could say well we start there. Yep. You know we'll start we start with the risk, but we really want to look at we want to look at the overall. We do kind of holistic planning where we're looking at a, a total financial picture and we want to do, it's, it all starts with the risk, but then we want to also make sure that we've got the income coming to, um, to our investors at the, at the right, in the right manner uh, and the right le uh, level of guarantees and the right level of risk for that. Yep. So we come at, we, we come to a, an overall risk score, but then we sort of segregate that through our entire uh, portfolio of investments, and we, we put the less risky investments on the front end okay. and the more uh, aggressive investments on the back end. And what I mean by that is the investments that you're going to need for income now yep. Those are the less risky ones, and the investments you're going to need for income later, or maybe you're not going to need income for it at all. It's simply uh, leave on money. It's yep. money you're going to leave on to your beneficiaries. Well, that's that's maybe where we can take a little more risk, and then we have um, you know a little bit more of a uh, a time horizon, or I should say, a longer time yes. horizon, and we can uh, be more invested in equities in that portion. Yep. And in, right now in the environment we're in, uh, the Department of Labor has uh, uh, made a stand about fiduciary relationships versus suitable. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sir? well, yeah, it's, it's actually good that we're going to cover that a little bit today because it's kind of a hot topic right now, and, it's, and, and, and some, of this, some of this regulation is starting to hit uh, mainstream media. But basically... What it means is when you have a fiduciary role 
That means that you have the role to act in the best interest of your clients, always. Okay, so you and I have that. Uh, we've always had that. Um, we've, we've, we've done the planning. We've treated our clients in that fashion in a, in a fiduciary role. We've got, you know, we've got the proper licenses to say, hey, you know, you're, a, you're, you're an investment advisor representative. This is what you should do. This is what you have to do. Um, when you compare that to what is simply suit, a suitable investment, simply, it's a lower, uh, it's a lower bar. Okay. It just means that the investment is okay. It's, it's, a, suitable rec it's a suitable investment. It doesn't necessarily mean it's th it's the best investment for the client. It yeah. just simply means it's a suitable investment for the client. Yeah. So, the 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 all this uh, regulation is good in so far as it 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 makes all of us uh, in this business sort of puts us all on a level playing field and says, your job is simple. Yeah. You're acting in the best interest of your client. Yeah. And, and Jeff, you, you do have uh, some designations, uh, CLU, CHFC. How do those make you really act at a higher standard around the fiduciary? Yeah, well, the, CL, the CLU and the CHFC designations, those are both um, uh, advanced industry designations yeah. that are offered by the American College. And what comes with what's unique to them is not just attaining those designations yep. and taking the classes to get the designation, but it's also uh, the continuing education that goes along with that. So you don't just get those designations and then, you know, st stick, your, stick them in a drawer. You have yep. to, you have to, to keep them, yep. you, have to ha you, you have to have continuing education. The American College doesn't let you keep those designations uh, unless you keep up with the continuing education. And the continuing education is important because now when you're, uh, when you're meeting with your clients, you're giving them the best information, yeah. you're giving them the most current information, and it really just allows you to be the best advisor that you can possibly be, yeah. and really allows you to act in that fiduciary capacity. And several years ago, you made the decision to go independent and versus maybe a career uh, relationship with an employer what, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so actually the, 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 that decision has its roots back to the beginning of our company, okay. back to the beginning of uh, Informed Family. We, uh, we were working for a, an agency, a, ca a captive agency, meaning we were working, in our case, we were working for an insurance company. And when you work with, in, that, in that role, um, you have you have an obligation to the company to you know there's in, in in the case of my situation I had quotas to meet yeah. like I had a I had to have so much production in a certain product yep. uh, or they you know they kicked you out oh, you know wow. there was an employment it, you know you had to uh, reach reach certain numbers so. There was a conflict there, a conflict of interest, I believe, yep. because you weren't always working necessarily in the best interest of your client because you had, in the back of your mind, you had this quota to me, yep. you know, so it was sort of a dual thing, a yep. dual, a, a, a dual um, objective. Yep. So we made the decision uh, a long, long time ago to become independent because when you're independent you don't have any production quotas you yep. don't have you don't work for one company when in fact you work for many companies you have several I shouldn't say you work for those companies you just simply have licenses and you're appointed to to put those products uh, in front of your clients so yep. then you have you really are truly independent because you can do what's in the best interest of your clients so we kind of evolved our company kind of went to that you know right from the beginning and and now it's the practice has evolved over the years to the point of that's who we are yep. we're independent we have this fiduciary responsibility to all of our clients yeah and, and 
with that in, in the basis as fiduciary, wh where do you see the industry maybe in five or ten years from now focused around that fiduciary? Well, I think, you know, what's going to happen is, you know, and, and of course the, um, I think there's kind of a natural tendency for that to happen and then I think a lot of this regulation is going to force the issue. Yep. I, I think what's going to happen is, um, to a large degree, it's going to become uh, survival of the fittest. Yep. Okay. Uh, there's going to be uh, probably less people coming into our business, yep. into our industry, so there's not going to be as many younger people coming in. Yep. And um, I think on the, on, the, on the back end of that, I think some of the older advisors are probably going to get out because yeah. it's just becoming, you know, the, the regulation is, the regulation can be overwhelming yeah. if you don't have the systems in place. Sure. And it really can be, and it's really a different way of, of operating. Mm -hmm. You know, your financial practice of today is different than your financial practice of 10 years ago. So I think that's going to there, there's probably going to be some uh, some attrition there yep. on the on on the back end. So it's there's going to be in the end um, there's going to be there's going to be less of us. There's going to be less advisors, right. and there, and we're and 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 most of us are going to be independent. Right, right. Now tell us a little about the process informed family uses. I know. You start with seminars that really start the educational process. Yeah, so we're really big on education, and we have a, we have a, a number of, of processes. But we do um, we do social security seminars. Okay. Uh, in fact, um, we're going to put up on the screen the uh, you know we have a couple seminars coming up. Uh, we're here locally, right here in Pottstown. Um, and then, of course, we're, uh, you know, we have, we have a, a, a workshop in, at Chadwick, which, which, is, uh, which is right around the corner from our other office down in, uh, in West Norriton. So um, those seminars are good because you can come out, see us live in person, and we talk very specific. Those workshops are going to be very specific to Social Security. So if you're uh, approaching the age where Social Security is an important decision, uh, you might want to come out and see us. So you can give us a call. Um, the number's up on the screen. You can give us a call or you can send us an email at info at informedfamily.com and we'll be sure uh, and get you tickets. So we, so we talk. We do a lot of education, Steve. We do... Um, a lot of social security seminars. We like the uh, we like this format. We like yeah. the TV. Um, you know, we've done radio yeah. in the past. Uh, you know, Barry, our, our other partner, Barry's, uh, has you know just recently helped write a, a book, and he did the long-term care portion of that. So there's a lot of education. Yeah. Uh, but as far as the process itself, you know, we, we, we use, um, we have a system called um, Asset Cycle Portfolio, and the Asset Cycle Portfolio is really kind of a way for us to manage our clients' assets in line with their risk score. Okay. Okay. So we get, we get the risk score, and then, you know, it's, that's just one step in the process. What's really, really important is that we then take what we call asset designation, and we transform everything into a systematic financial plan. Because what we've found is when most uh, people come in to see us, they don't really have a plan. Yeah. They have a lot of stuff. They got, you know, they've got assets here, they've got assets there. You know, some of them come in with, you know, 20 different statements of stuff that's really all over the place. And it's really not a plan. Yep. It's more like, here, here you go, here's what we've got. And, you know, there's no really process of, well, this, you know, this asset is, is specific for this need and this asset is for another need. Generally, that's not the case. Yep. 
So one of our first jobs is to sort of organize that and put it into a, a, a pattern of a, a, a plan. And, that, well, and, and we refer to that as our asset cycle portfolio. Yep. And Jeff, before we close, is there anything that you want to add today? Well, I think the, uh, the risk is really important. The markets are at all-time highs. Yep. Um, people tend to get into a sense of uh, complacency or maybe even a sense of euphoria that, they're, hey, the markets are going up and I'm making money. But we really have to be mindful of the risk. And I'm not here to predict that there's going to be a crash or anything like that because we don't know. You know, the market could be on another strong run for another 10 years. We don't, we don't know that. But fundamentally, it's important to have your risk um, done in a proper way so that you're invested the right way in the market, in all markets. Um, so I guess we want to promote the, uh, the risk score. So give, give, our, give our office a call okay. um, if, if you want to uh, take advantage of, of that. There's no obligation. Simply give, a, give our office a call um, and we can, do a, we can do a risk score. It's very easy. We'll send, we send you a link yep. and, and we get you a score. Um, so, and we do have a, we do have a website, which, uh, you know, we have a lot of good information on our website. It's informedfamily.com. Okay. So you can go out onto our, uh, our company website and, um, good. get more information on who we are as a company, our background and, you know, our upcoming workshops. We have all of our old, uh, shows, all of our old TV shows out there. We've been doing this now, uh, for about three and a half years. Okay. So it's been quite a, quite a good run we've had here on PCTV. So with all that being said, uh, we're going we're gonna to sign off here uh, today. And this has been another uh, episode of, of Financially Speaking with Jeff Bush.